Welcome to Activations with JJ, where we explore this amazing time of shift, ascension, and spiritual awakening with open minds and expanded hearts. Thanks for joining me on this incredible journey. Hi, welcome to this episode of Activations with JJ. Glad to have you join me for this one, and I'm excited to be here with you, as always. I have been reading lots of really fascinating information from the book I mentioned even a couple of times ago, and so my mind is just going with all kinds of things. I think the biggest thing is when you read uh, literature that's, you know, books that are regarding these different subjects like interdimensionals or... I don't know, DNA, you know, that kind of thing. It, it gives you vocabulary for things you've kind of felt like, but just couldn't really verbalize. And so I think that it's it's good to study things. I think it should be done with discernment. And in fact, if you haven't had a chance to listen to this week's, well, it depends on when you're listening to this, but the December 14th, 2020 energy update, these new updates I'm doing every week, the Archangel Uriel came through and mentioned that it's important for us to connect with Source. And the reason behind it that was mentioned was that it allows us to have better discernment. I think a lot of times we think that because things are done on the etheric realm, you know, because we're receiving energy that's not physical, that those energies know everything. They're all knowing and wise and always have good intentions. And that's not always necessarily true, um, and that's why discernment is so important. I think that that's one of the reasons why I like to tap into different energies because I don't like to just focus on one particular energy because I feel like we need to be exposed to all different kinds and use our discernment for those reasons. Before I go into some channeling of, of some archangel energy, which I've wanted to do today, I thought I would touch on that subject a little bit more by giving you some details about this book that I keep talking about. So I actually have the whole name here, Earth Changes and Beyond, Messages from the Founders by Sal Rochelle. And I just want to read a little portion that I read today that I thought, oh, there, there we go. That's what we need to know. In the book, he's channeling a an energy that it's kind of a group that calls themselves the founders. You can read more about it in the book. I'm not going to go into detail about who they are, but they, they say, we urge extreme discernment when viewing any channeled material and would encourage you to be wary of any such information that claims to be 100% accurate. That said, we need to lay some groundwork for what is about to be discussed. And they, they talk about some different things, but the reason that they say that is because there are different veils over the planet that are both for good purposes and some that are not for good purposes. So some of them are to protect us and others are to prevent us from knowing things. And so I thought that was really fascinating. He goes on in the book to talk about how sometimes things are warped that are channeled because it's just really, really tough to break through that veil like he was kind of it was, it was kind of like they were saying not very many people I don't want to say right now but I'm just saying like not a huge percentage of people are able to really break through and get to the true Akashic records which I thought was fascinating because he said there are you know the Akashic records are there but even it, it's it's when they're being accessed through that sort of lens or that that veil I guess you could say through that filter that's when they get a little bit warped and that's where we need to be careful and use our discernment. In the same vein, um, when we have energies come through and we feel like, you know, so many of us that are light workers are able to have clear audience, right? So we can tap into different energies and what they're saying. I do believe that if you are at a high vibration, that you're not going to attract low vibration, but, uh, but, you know, negative intention type energies. But that doesn't mean that something because it's a higher density is any better than you. He goes on again in the book to say, 
there are higher density energies and lower density energies, but that does not mean that they're better or worse because they're higher or lower, which I thought was fascinating because I think we always assume that like 90 energies, 80, 70, whatever it is, are wiser and better and have more compassion and all of these things. And he, and there are accounts and information given in the book that say, you know, there's, there's this density beings and some of them have good intentions and some of them have bad. And just because they're, you know, higher density than we are does not mean that uh, they are going to to be a good influence, I guess you could say. Again, uh, I think just empowering ourselves to trust our connection with source and to focus on that connection first is very, very vital to any communications that we do receive, to any uh, downloads, transmissions, anything that comes through. We want to make sure, not to make us paranoid, but if it's going to be for our greatest and highest good, then we need to use these discernment powers through our connection with source. Now, that being said, there's another level to all of this that every time I read something, I always, you know, you kind of get down rabbit holes like, well, I wonder which star race I'm from. And this book actually clears a lot of that up, which I, it, it really resonates with me. But again, I'm not saying it's 100% accurate, as I just mentioned before. But it does have some really interesting theories in it and some things that resonate more with me. It, it, it's definitely not as cut and dry as we, we try to paint things to be sometimes in the spiritual world, especially people talking about interdimensionals. It's way more complex than we think it is, and they allude to that in this book. That's what really resonates with me. They're not there saying this is it, and this is the only way it is, and this is the story. It's like... Well, there's a lot. It's really complicated. But here's the part that we need to tell you. So I really, really recommend, I highly recommend you grabbing the book. I just got it off of Kindle. So I just downloaded it. It was really easy to download. The version I have is the latest version. So if you go back and look at the title, I can put it a link to the book in the show notes so that you know what where to find it. But again, it's... Um, it's really fascinating to read. It's really important for us to, I think, read these things so we can expand our minds and so that these concepts, when something resonates with us, we have words to put to it because of our limitations that we have, uh, some limitations that we have as humans, we like to have and cling on to these, the, the verbal, the linguistic part of it to help us conceptualize things. And so, uh, again, I just, I couldn't recommend it more. I'm not even done reading it, but there's so much that's come through after reading it and just being super fascinated with all of the different races, all the different densities and all their different intentions. It, it occurred to me how important it is. And, and I've heard it before. And I honestly, I think it might've been this book or somewhere else. Let's a podcast talk about it, that the angels, the angelic realm is the closest to source that you can get other than being with source. And of course we know if we really think about it, our connection to source is always there. The idea that we're not connected to source is just an illusion. And some of that has to do with the veil and the fact that we're kind of in these lower density places. And it also has to do with um, our ego. I just wanna make sure that we know that, you know, it's actually an illusion that we're not connected. We are source, we are divinity. We are a little, one person put it this way, a fractal God. But I do like, again, to bring through different energies and I wanted to bring through uh, some angelic energies today because I just felt like that would be a benefit to us. So we'll go ahead and settle into the angelic energy that I would like to bring through. And interestingly enough, it's the same energy that I brought through in the energy update for this week, December 14th. And that is the Archangel Uriel, a very peaceful energy. So I will go ahead and convey the message, the transmission here. We appreciate the time that you are spending with us at this moment, dear ones. We bring compassion, we bring love, 
We bring everlasting light. We bring flow. We bring wisdom. We bring kindness. We bring pacification. We bring a settled feeling. And we wish you to breathe into that feeling at this moment. To inhale and receive that feeling. And as you release and exhale, release any resistance that you might have to that feeling as well. We wish to invite you to imagine yourself being bathed in a golden light. Oranges and reds and yellows, a golden light which we bring and which we bathe you in at this moment if you choose to receive the transmission that we are bestowing upon you at this time. We sense that some of you may be asking if whether or not we are many or we are one, and we are all, we are many, we are one. We prefer to use the term we in the language of your planets and the languages of your planet because we wish to help everyone understand that we are all one and that there's always we, the I is an illusion. The collective is what we are. Again, just receiving the bathing light, which we are transmitting at this time as we prepare you for the verbal message. Always important to prepare so that you may receive it to the fullest extent, not just the words, but the vibrations. Not just the heard, but the unheard. Not just the seen, but the unseen. So important to prepare. And preparation, dear ones, is a theme for our message today. A central theme, indeed. The idea of preparation for that is what you find yourselves in at this moment in time. And in fact, there have been things manipulated and, and organized so that you may prepare. That is what this great slowing down is about, is a time of preparation for many of you. For those of you of, of a higher density as they entered this time, for those who are already at the higher density, we knew that it would provide you ample time to disconnect and to prepare. And prepare for what, you may ask. We lovingly answer you with so much love, so much compassion. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? You are preparing for a glorious future, dear ones. You are preparing for an increase of light, for an increase of love, for an increase of unity, for an increase of abundance on this planet. Those who are listening are resonating at a vibrational level that will allow them to experience what we are saying. Do not doubt. Only trust and prepare. How specifically might you prepare? And we answer again with so much love, so much love. Simply be 
the piece of divine that you are. Sink into your divinity. Disconnect from the stories and the energies that might distract you from the core of your essence. Sit with divinity. Hold space for divinity. Immerse yourself in divinity. For you are divinity. You may at this time increase your reception of our message with a deep inhale and a deep exhale again. For it is a very intense message which we convey, not in a negative way, but full of information for you. With the sound of our voice, the vibrations which exit the mouth of the channel and enter into your ear, there is a great deal of programming. There is a great deal of information. And it is not new to you, dear ones. It is not new. It is simply a way to remind you. It is simply a way to bring forth to your remembrance the truth of who you are. To bring forth to your remembrance the truth of your essence, of your soul. The truth of where you came from. And even in saying those words, we laugh. For you are still there. You have never left. The idea of leaving, the idea of separation is an illusion. You are there, dear ones. The preparation we are mentioning to you is a preparation of the mind, a releasing of the veil. Some of you may see it similar to the movie where there's a blue pill and a red pill. It is simply an awakening, simply an awakening, dear ones, that we lovingly invite you to undertake or to prepare to undertake your highest self knows your journey, knows your path, and be confident and trust in it. Be confident and trust in it. We leave you in love and in peace and in light and in everlasting beauty. And so it is. Farewell. Okay. Go ahead and take some breaths again as we come back from that transmission. I don't know if you felt it as powerfully as I did channeling it, but I hope you did because that energy was so just so lovely just so beautiful and just felt so good like a balm like a balm to my soul and i hope it was the same for you and i just want to remind you that 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 energy that uh, came through is available to you at any moment it is true that it is an illusion that it's not there for you. It's always there for you. It's always there for you. Before I sign off, I just want to remind you that 
I love and appreciate you. I am so grateful that you come to co-create with me. And I encourage you to share with those who you think this might resonate with the podcast or the YouTube channel, however you're listening to this. And to, if you feel so inclined to go ahead and subscribe and to allow this message to get to more people. It's a beautiful one, and I think it's appropriate to say that my intention is to have it expand and grow and to enter the ears of, of many more people. Just so, so amazing, the love of Source. So amazing and so different from many of the spiritual traditions that have developed through ego or have been warped through ego. It's just the core essence of everything's love. So thank you again. And as always, the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.